Welcome to another episode of Life in the Spirit. I'm Craig Miller, and I'm here again with Lynn Furl. And I know that last time when we got together, we were talking about Russia and Ukraine and the David, Davids and Goliaths and all those things that were happening. And we even promised that we would get into John Paul Jackson and what he spoke in 2008 in The Perfect Storm. So today, this episode, we're going to try and get through that. So Lynn promised that he would do that. So what do you think, Mr. Furrow? <laughs> okay, focus. That's what I think. Focus, Lynn. So I know that we were talking about us having hearts that are hearing like never before. And then we started talking about Ukraine and the crisis there and how there is a pattern and a principle. But we even wanted to go... Uh, and just share bigger than this one national yes. or international crisis. Um, and you made reference to a brother by the name of John Paul Jackson. And for those of you that do not know uh, who John Paul Jackson is, he was a prophetic brother that uh, was a really a prophet teacher. And he could exposit the word of God. He was very scholarly but also he was prophetic. And God gave him, uh, through several encounters, a kind of a, a future view of a decade yeah. in the future that was going to happen. And again, when he uh, publicly unveiled or spoke about what God had showed him, and what the Lord did in the encounter that the Lord gave him, the Lord gave him uh, headlines from newspapers. Yes. And he said that he just, the, the newspaper would change and he would see another major headline. And in this teaching that he gave, and guys, I believe that if you're watching this, there is going to be a link to about an hour-long video where he explains what the Lord showed him. And I encourage you, if you yeah, haven't so watched it yet, go there. And there's uh, several out there on YouTube, but there's one that has a complete teaching where he gives the entire overview. But the gist of the perfect storm was he said that he saw coming in the 2020s, and he said that it would start, it would be a decade and it would start in 2020, and we should have uh, refreshed our, our memories because, as many of you know, right away in 2020, we had the COVID pa pandemic. And, you know, then we thought it's going to get over, and then 2021 occurred, and now we're into 2022, and we, we saw in 2021 you know, inflation appear again, economic shaking, continued pandemics, natural disasters, yes. volcanoes going off. Uh, we saw all sorts of, of in our country, uh, wildfires that consume tens of thousands of acres, yes. all these things. And so everybody was saying, I thought 2021 would be better, but it looks as intense as 2020. But now here we are. Uh, finishing February, first day of March today, yes. and we have a global crisis that uh, just manifested suddenly. And it started increasing the noise of it, uh, rumors of it in February, but now we know that the nation of Russia has invaded Ukraine. And John Paul Jackson said that in the decade of the 2020s, he said the reason why he called it the perfect storm is he said that there would be economic, military, religious, political, and geophysical issues and events that would be occurring simultaneously or kind of like a rapid fire succession. And he said what it's going to do is it's going to cause the nations of the earth and the governments, the rulers of the earth, to be in shock and awe and, and their inability to deal with all of these crises that will be happening simultaneously or one right after another. 
And as you know, you know, in a perfect storm, there are various elements that all have to fuse together, yes. converge together for some type of a storm that is historic, um, you know, to, to, to be seen that's going to be in the record books or the history books forever. Well, he said the 2020s are going to be like that. Now, when I state that, that's not to be a discouragement that's, to us. Yeah. God is obviously going to shake things up because after this decade of shaking, there is something that God is at work to, to unveil and reveal, and that is an unshakable foundation. Amen. He is going to shake everything that can be shaken so that that which cannot be shaken may still be seen standing and that people will move away from the things that they built their lives upon, faulty foundations, yes. corrupt foundations, to an eternal foundation. And I think God is going to set the stage then for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit that the world has ever known. Amen. And the way we will quantify it is by the global results of an unparalleled, unprecedented harvest that means that over a billion people will come to Jesus in a very short time. So the church has That's exciting. a hope in a coming harvest that you and I are going to, by God's grace, live to see, Amen. participate in, in, in being able to call forth hundreds and thousands of people to the cross of Christ and see them come to the Lord and, and I believe that this final harvest, this global harvest, this final outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which will, again, be something that it will be unprecedented, will precede the Lord's return. And, but we are now in a moment where we're going to go through a decade where anything that distracts us, any trivial pursuit that still captivates us anything that would be uh, an impurity or a spot or a blemish within the church all those things we're, we're going to come to a place of crystal clear focus and yes. clarity because we will understand we're living in days that have never been experienced not just chronologically on the face of the earth the challenges globally that we will face uh, in this decade is going to be something that will be unprecedented. It's not going to be regional. It's not just going to be national. And, but this is a warning I want to give the, the, the American church and the American people. If you don't think that we're going to be touched by this, that somehow we're that island that doesn't have to deal with what happens in the continent of Africa or what's going on in Asia, make no mistake about it. Everybody is going to be experiencing uh, because we've created global economies, and that was to create global stability, international stability. Well, there is stability as long as it stays intact. Well, what you're going to see, God is going to shake everything. everything. Yep. So we are going to see not just the rumors of wars. We're going to see major wars and you, you, had, you may want to ask me, will it be another world war? Will it be on a scale of like a World War I, World War II? I say absolutely. Yeah. We are going to see war on a global scale. Uh, we're going to see political unrest and instability. We're going to see spiritual, religious upheaval and turmoil, economic. And some of that, again, all of the, the disruption is good because... He's, he's going to shake the corruption. He's going to shake the leaven of sin, that which corrupts and dilutes and pollutes. He's going to remove all of that yes. so that, again, we become seekers of the king and his rightful place. Yeah. You know, you, you say that and we're going through this. And <clears throat> it's just like I hear the Lord, you know, saying, have I got your focus yet? 
Yeah. Yeah. Have I got your attention? <laughs> Have I got your attention? Are, are you seeing what's, what's happening here? And are you ready for it? You know, every time that we talk about this, Lynn, I, I, I kind of mm -hmm. go back to even one of our, of our very first episodes that we did. And it brings me back to Nehemiah again on the building of the wall and making sure that those foundations are, are sound because, you know, I've had to check. I've had to look at my foundations. I had to see where there was bad mortar, and I had to take that stone out and replace it. That's right. You know, and, and it's by the grace of God that I was able to do that because we know by words previous that the shaking, it's not that it's coming. The shaking is here. It's here. I mean, we have physically been a part of the shaking. There's been attacks of the enemy in, in, in the spirit that have come against the body of, of Christ and us personally because of what we believe and how we are speaking against what the enemy is trying to do here on earth. And so, you know, I when I hear these things that are happening, happening globally and even in our nation, I mean, everything you said, we could say, yes, that's happening right now in our nation. Mm -hmm. There is political unrest. There, I mean, the currency, the money, the, the uh, stock, stock market. market. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just this stuff. As we look at it and, you know, all of the different snowstorms that, you know, the century storms, the, the floods that we've been having, earthquakes that, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's it's all right now. And it's like, I just continue to hear the Lord. Have I got your attention? Yeah. Do you see what I'm doing? And so I look at this and I just, you know, for me, I say, thank you, Jesus. You know, Craig, Peter said, judgment first begins in the house of God. Then when it appears mm -hmm. in the world, what are the unrighteous going to do? Uh, when judgment appears in the house of the Lord, it says mercy. It, it really is an act of God's mercy as he disciplines his kids. Because he is going to set his house in order, knowing that his household is going to be postured and positioned yes. to minister to the world that will need to know the answers, that will need to, to know truth, because they've bought into lies and deceptions and yes. false hopes, and they're going to ha need to have a purified, glorified, a church that radiates the presence and the, and the revelation of Christ from them to shine into the darkness, because um, there's going to be two kingdoms that is functioning. And one is called the kingdom of darkness yes. and the other one, the kingdom of light. Well, it, as things get darker and darker and darker, and there are levels of darkness. Yeah. I tell you what, when you're in uh, deep or gross darkness, the scripture describes it at, light is a wonderful thing. Amen. And I know you and I both, because uh, we love the outdoors, we have been uh, hunting where we've had to go out in the middle of the night and there were no stars there. Uh, there was overcast. There was no reference points. And it was dark in the woods. Yeah. And when you finally see a star begin to twinkle and, and you go, thank you. Thank you. There is a point of light, <laughs> at least. Yeah. I know that I'm, I haven't stumbled into some dark abyss. But, um, you know, the church has an opportunity to be a bright and a shining light. I want to uh, ask you this question practically, because I know that we've had some discussions on this. Do you think that the church not only should spiritually prepare, which we're talking about waking up, inclining our ears to hear, seeking God's face, but what are some of the practical things that we need to do? Oh, man, Lynn, you know, we just talked about this a couple of episodes ago, and I mean, we do need to wake up. You know, we continue to think that the church is inside the four walls, and it's not. You know, we continue to think that we can just sit back and allow other people to do the work, and we can't. We can't rely on one, two, three, four, five people. The body of Christ has to be the stone that is rolling. It has to be the one that is moving. And so when we come in, and I know that we have life in the spirit, we have life in the word, we have encounter nights, we have life in the family, we have all these great things that we're doing, and, and those things are good, but I think sometimes, you know, we miss the most obvious, and that's 
getting before the Lord and praying, like I said in our first time mm-hmm. that you and I talked, and hearing what the Lord has to has to say to us, being intent upon his word, and then follow through with the word that mm-hmm. he speaks to us. You know, we are past those times in the body of Christ where the Lord speaks to us, and we take that, and we put it upon the shelf, and that's where it stays. And every once in a while, we dust it off, and we take it down, and we look at it, and we go, isn't that wonderful? God spoke. <laughs> at, at, at another time, this may be fulfilled, and we put it back up on the shelf. And, you know, sometimes I think we even take those words that have been spoken, and that's like our trophy case. You know, that this is what God spoke to me. He spoke this to me. I know that it was him. But it's like, if we don't take action to the word that has been spoken, what good is that Right. in, in our life and in the body of Christ? So if we aren't doing, if we aren't moving, and if we aren't speaking, and if we aren't sharing the truth that God has spoken to us and revealed to us, mm-hmm. I think we failed the church and the body. Yeah. Jesus said that. He said that those that truly love me are those that do the things I say. And I agree. It's a wonderful thing to have him speak to you. But he looks at obedience as not just in the hearing, but in the walking it out in faith, uh, in obedience to what he's doing. Craig, I see that there is going to, in this decade, I believe that there is a Joseph dimension that, yes. that the church, because church is going to be redefined. It's, it's not going to be an event scheduled at a certain time, even though there are meetings and gatherings and, and you have yeah. facilities that facilitate. More and more, we're going to be acting as a community yeah. because... Uh, the calling to Christianity is not to just believe, but to belong. Amen. And, and there, is, there is this thing where God wants us to function as a community. And Joseph was shown ahead of time what was coming to pass. And he interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And, and you know, it was spoken that there would be X, Y, Z number of days or years of prosperity. Yes. And then X, Y, Z number of days of calamity and famine and drought. And so Joseph, in the days of prosperity, they they saved some of the harvest and put it in storehouses so that Egypt would have enough to feed not only the Egyptian people, but the nations of the earth. And it made Egypt the wealthiest nation at the time. I look now at... President Trump's presidency as a thing where God in his mercy gave us a period of great prosperity, peace, tranquility, and there were domestic enemies that tried to create disturbance. But actually, we had an economy that that was, you know, uh, a sound economy. And, and we, don't, we didn't get that God was saying, I'm going to show you mercy, a calm before the storm. Yeah. And so I hope that you prepared yes. in the calm, because I think all of us could see the storms on the horizon, but hopefully you prepared. But if we are not prepared, we're still in the first two years of this decade. We've got to start getting our house in order and getting the church mobilized to be able to deal with what's coming in the next eight years. And some of that is the spiritual preparation, getting real with God. But there's also going to be some practical things of how we come together as a community, how we provide for each other and our larger community, our cities, our towns, our neighbors. Uh, And we got to have those type of conversations. We, you know, they talk about the modern day preppers. Mm-hmm. We have to be prepared for yeah. what's coming. And I think that's a part of the, you know, we can call it Joseph company or that, you know, we can do that. And I just, man, I'm just, we, we need to do it. We need to, to work on that and to work towards that. I agree with you 100%, Lynn. I mean, we just, we live in those days. We live in those times. Things are being shaken. God's given us, you know, an opportunity to do what we need to do to prep and prepare 
for, for those things that are coming. Yeah. So, Lynn, Mr. Furrow, <laughs> I appreciate your time here, and I hope you all enjoyed your time with us today in Life in the Spirit. And we just want to say thank you for watching. God bless you. Love you Bye. guys. Bye-bye.